the first question uh, uh, is, or the first part of the, the theatering will focus on human resources. So the human resources function, uh, recruitment. Recruitment is when we want to fill uh, open vacancies. So we get four sources of inter and the recruitment and in brackets we gave you a little acronym that you guys can remember w i n i winnie um that you can remember for your answers so the question was name four sources of internal recruitment and then the answers for this is the w is for word of mouth the i the first i is for internal emails the n is for on the notice boards and the second I will be internal bulletin. So this is the way that a manager or the HR manager can advertise uh, open vacancies internally. That means inside the business. Okay. You must, you guys must really ask questions if you uh, have any, but I will go through the, the booklet with you. The second question is differentiate between job description and job specification. So job description has to do with what must you do while busy with the job. And job specification will always be what do you need to do to be able to do this job. So like I said, job description it describes the duties and responsibilities of a specific job. And also, it describes the key performance areas. That means um, your job title. Maybe, for example, you will be the uh, financial clerk. So that means you will have your the key performance area will be you will work in finance. The job specification, however, it describes the minimum skills and experience needed for the job. So what do you need to be able to qualify to fill this job? What, do you, what are they looking for before they appoint somebody, the job specifications? And also it says it describes the key requirements for the person who will fill the position. Like I said, maybe your formal qualifications, they might also look at um, experience. So the difference between the two is description has to do with the job itself, the duties, what must we do. The specification has to do with what do I need when I apply for a job? What skills do I need? And what key requirements do I need to be able to fill this position? The next question, the purpose of induction. Now, induction happens when somebody already has been appointed and they went for the interview and all of that took place. And now you receive the job. You are the candidate that actually got the job. So what is the purpose of induction? The purpose of induction is basically just to give the new employees a tour of the building. That means to familiarize yourself with the surroundings. Secondly, the purpose of induction is you are a new person, so you need to know people that you work with. So. The purpose will be to introduce you to all your supervisors and all your colleagues. And then thirdly, the purpose of induction is to communicate information about the products and services offered by the business. So you must know where you work, what the place looks like, where the bathroom is, um, where you must go to maybe see the manager. That is giving you a tour of the building. Then also, you can't just then don't know who you report to. So you will be introduced to your supervisors and also your colleagues because you're going to work in a team now. And you won't be able to do your job if you don't know what the business is about. So induction is introducing you to your job. It's introducing you to the place you're going to work, to the people you will work with, and also what are you doing there? What type of business, what type of industry you get? Anybody have any questions yet? No, okay, so I'll go on. 
what must be included, the aspects that must be included in an induction program. So, another acronym here in brackets, ITS, it's for short, first of all, introduction to key people and immediate colleagues that should be included. Secondly, like I said, a tour of the premises. And thirdly, safety regulations and rules. So, so the first one that we, we discussed was the purpose of induction. Why is induction important? Now, the aspects that must be included in an induction program is, while induction is taking place, what is the key things that must happen? Like the purpose? Uh, Mrs. Uh, sorry, yes. Mrs. Okay. Um, yeah. And then we were busy with so the aspects that must be in included in induction program, like we said, there's three things. Um, it should be your introduction to key people. Then the second thing will be the tour of the premises. And then thirdly, it will be communication information about the products and services offered by the business. So um, three things. Sorry, now we jumped again. Sorry, dears. Get this thing here. Okay, I'm so sorry about that. Um, the next slide, the next question is differentiate between piecemeal and time-related salary de determination methods. So when you apply for a job and they recruit you and you got the position, you will either be paid for the hours or the time that you work or month to month basis, or you will be paid for the amount of work that you have completed. So the difference between these two is the piecemeal is the one that you will get paid for the number of units produced and then time related, just what it says it is for the amount of time you spend at work. That is, you spend time, uh, maybe a few hours and you get paid for the hours. Or it can be based also on uh, when you work weekly, also on the total amount of hours per week that you will get paid. And piecemeal is for the pieces, if you want to remember it like that, it's for the pieces that you finished, uh, the number of units produced, okay? Um, any questions about HR? Because we're going to move over to quality now. No questions, Ms. Uh, Ms. Gordon? Nothing? Okay. Right. So, quality man management. Um, I know, like I said in the beginning, my, uh, my learners they really dislike this topic. They don't like to answer quality management at all. So, name five elements of total quality management. So the five things that, that we need to include in quality management are as, as follows. It will be number one, continuous skills development. Because if we have quality uh, workers in our um, business and we continually upskill them, we continually take them um, for training and things, our production will be more efficient. Okay. The next thing is continuous improvement of processes and systems. So if we see there's something wrong in the way we do something, maybe a process is or our system is not right, then we need to look at that. That is also part of quality management. Thirdly, if we don't have money or we don't have financing or the capacity to do the job at hand, we will have a problem. So we need to take a look at adequate financing and capacity to produce a product or a service of quality. And then fourthly, I think the main thing is for, for total quality is when our customers are happy and then our sales will increase. So that is the, the purpose uh, behind quality management. So that must also be 
of total quality management, total customer satisfaction. And then number five, the first element will be, we need to monitor and evaluate our quality processes. We need to keep up to date. We need to check that things are actually working. We need to evaluate. Are we actually developing our worker skills? Are we actually continuously improving our processes and systems? Do we have enough money? Is there the capacity? Do we have the right machines um, for, for our total quality management, for a quality produce that we, we need to give to our customers? And then, the next slide. List the elements of the PDCA model. So first of all, you need to know what the PDC model is. It is the model that we use to create quality control systems or to create a total quality management system. So how do we do it? We first need to plan what needs to be done. When must it be done? How can we do it? That is our planning. We first need to plan. Then after we know what is expected of us and where we need to do some changes, we must now do something. After we've started to doing something, we must control it. We must control what is going to happen, control our staff, give them to do by a certain time and make sure that they actually do it. And then when we implement our new system, we need to act on it. We need to be active and check and monitor and evaluate that this um, plan that we implemented, that it's actually working. Um, Ms. Ms. The next slide. Yes. Is this this? yes. Yeah. Can I just say? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm, I, I'm going to allow um, John Ramsey, Mrs. Kuhn, yes. to just, um, because her uh, hand was up, Mrs. Kuhn, okay. I allowed your mic now. Can you say what you wanted to say, please? Mrs. Kuhn? Mrs. Kuhn? Okay, the comment um, here was that you are going a little too fast. Okay. Um, yeah, so they want you to just go a little bit slower, please. Okay, okay, Mrs. Gordon, we'll do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, right, explain, oh, oh, we will see with the list of elements of the PDCA model. Um, the next slide is explain the impact of total quality management if it is poorly implemented by businesses. So, um, sometimes, the learners don't um, understand what they must answer here when it says the impact of poorly implemented by businesses. I get it that learners always uh, jump into the question and then they just answer it. Um, how will total quality management impact our business? So here we have to look at if there is no total quality management, if there is um, no quality procedures in place, what will happen? Explain the impact of it if it's not implemented in our business. So they show you there, uh, uh, once again, um, the computer screen, and then you know it will have to do with training or, or somebody, there's a there's little guy standing there. So if you can remember this picture, you will remember that the first thing is employees may not be adequately trained because that has to do with training. And, and then when they're not trained, that means that they will, um, it will result in a bad product or a product of poor quality. And the next picture showing us there is a downward arrow. And that means that it will be a decline in productivity. And there will be stoppages because people need to go check if something is wrong, if the machine broke down, if our machines are not updated. And we have to do like a mass production of something and the machines break down. It will have a, an impact of decline in productivity. 
And then thirdly, um, it says the reputation of the business may suffer because of faulty goods. So if there's no quality management or it is poorly implemented, it is not uh, supervised a certain quality procedures, that will uh, in effect have inadequate uh, trained uh, employees. And if they are not trained in how to do something, we will sit with bad products that we can't sell. And then, like I said, secondly, if we don't check our machinery on uh, maybe weekly or however you implement your system uh, basis and the machine broke down, then it will have to force you to stop product production. And if all of this happens, people will speak about your business. They will tell uh, the next customer or the next person that, no, don't go to so-and-so over that business because the employees, they're not trained in customer service, number one, they're unfriendly. And the second thing is they sell products of poor, poor quality. And then also the work doesn't get, when you order something, you don't receive it on time. So that will, in the end, show a bad reputation of your business because of the faulty goods and because of stoppages and all of that. So advise business on the benefits of a good quality management system. Now, the previous one, like I said, is the impact of poorly implemented uh, total quality management. Now, this is the opposite. Why is it important for total quality management system. Why is it, what, how does the business, business benefit from this? So if a business um, implements total quality management or they are on point with it and they uh, regularly check their, their people, the skills, and they check the machinery and um, they check that the products that go out is of a high quality, this will then save time, first of all, because People are skilled in what to do, and they, don't, they won't waste time. And also our machines will be uh, serviced and it will be in a working condition. So there is no time for stoppages, so production will go on. So, and then also the third thing, the second thing is effective customer service are rendered because we have quality workers. We have workers that understand what a customer need and what must be done for a customer. And we have skilled workers, so they will be able to produce effective customer service or better or a customer service of better quality. And if a customer service or customer is, is satisfied with the services, they will come back to buy something from us. They will come again and we will in end have a good word going around about our business. And when that happens, we will have a competitive advantage. So if the machines don't break down, people know what to do because we have a good quality management system, we will save on time and resources. That means time and resources will be used efficiently. Secondly, when our people are skilled and products are done on time and it's of good quality, we are rendering a good customer service, which will result in increased customer satisfaction. And then thirdly, when all of this is in place, we're using our resources efficiently, we have enough time, our customer service is on point, this will give our business a competitive advantage because people will choose our business over the next business. They will choose our product over the product, maybe a similar product of another business. Elaborate on the meaning of quality assurance. Now, quality assurance, when we assure something, it means it must be so. It is, we're making sure that it is so. So quality assurance is we need to make sure that we're producing a product of quality. And how do we do that? We can't just wait to check the product at the end. We need to check it during the production process and 
after the production process. So quality assurance as I was continually checking if we're producing a product of quality. So the meaning, elaborate on the meaning of quality assurance. It is carried out during and after the production process to make sure, to ensure the required standards have been met. Like quality control is when we will check the final product. If we may revisit with mass production, we can only check the, the final uh, stage of, of production. But quality assurance, I always tell my learners that if you're making an expensive product, if you're making something that takes a lot of time and a lot of resources, you have to make sure that the product that you are producing is of high standards or at the required standards, because if not, we will lose the money. We will lose the value, valuable time that we spend on making this product. So quality assurance is important when we're busy with a speciality product or a product that is of very high value. So during the process and after the process, we're making sure that the product meet the required standards and this is what quality assurance is. Quality management and quality performance. Now, we need to distinguish. That means we have to show what is, where is the difference in quality management and quality performance. Now, quality management is the process of all the activities, managing everything, the total, the business, all the departments has to be um, under one roof, under one standard. So the process of total quality management or quality management Management is it's the process of managing all the activities needed to ensure a business produces goods and services of a high standard. So from the beginning, from the people that uh, buys the raw material, the purchasing function, uh, through the people that has to uh, do the production, the people that actually um, has to do with the marketing, selling our product that all the processes of, of producing this product is of a high standard. It's all of them together that we can have a product of high standard at the end. Now, quality performance, that is the performance of each department measured against the specified standards. So if we look at what is the total quality performance of the purchasing function, that will be they need to buy good or uh, effective and uh, high quality raw materials. What will the total uh, quality performance be for the finance department? They will have to present information that is true, that is accurate, that is timely. So each department's performance are measured on that department's specified standards. We can't measure production standards against finance standards. So quality management has to do with all the activities to get this product on the shelf and on a good uh, quality standard. Quality performance has to do with each department doing what they're supposed to do. They are giving the outcomes that we need for example, administration function, all the filing will be up to date. All the mail will be sent out. Um, there will be enough stationery for the business. So all the departments have their own level of standards. And if that department adheres to that standards, they have total quality performance. Any questions? Okay. So now, how can we indicate if a business function actually renders a quality 
this in that specific function. So now we're looking here at the general management function. Suggest quality indicators. That means quality indicators. What are we looking for? What actually, what uh, element are we looking at to test or to see if this function is giving a service of quality? So quality indicator is the thing that we look at to see if that business function is actually performing how they're supposed to. So this question is suggest quality indicators of the general management function. What does general management do? They do all the planning. Um, they tell the people where to do and what to do and how to do it. And they have to tell people what the business, the goals are. So the quality indicators for general management will be as follows. First of all, they need to develop effective strategic plans. So a strategic plan is just your plan of action. They need to develop effective strategic plans. Number one. Number two, efficient allocation of resources. Um, yes. This is Mrs. Fimpis. Yes. Um, and, uh, there's a, there's a, a, a question from, from Atlantis Secondary. Yes. yes. They want to know what quality control is. Quality um, control? Yeah. Oh, I think, yeah. I think maybe we must refer them to the one pages that they, that the teachers, um, was supposed to to copy for them. Okay, is is the question from a learner there? <laughs> quality control. Uh, it seems, it, yeah, it seems like it, it just says here yeah, what is quality control. Um, okay, that is Atlanta Secondary. Okay, right. So let me just go back there to quality assurance quickly. Um, quality assurance, like I said. Uh, quality assurance is the process of checking if our product is on the right standards during the production process and also after. Yes, Ms. Gordon, another question? Or, no, no. So oh, okay. quality, they wanted to know quality control. Yes, yes. I'm just, I just want to show them the difference quickly between yeah, the two. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then quality control. We're checking the final product, if the final product has met the required standards. So assurance is we're checking during and after. And quality control is uh, carried out at the end. We're checking the final product if it actually met the required standards. Okay? Yes? Yes. Um, and then um, an another learner asked um, that. Uh, oh, actually, just said that that uh, they they feel it's still going a little too fast. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. If you if you go, uh, maybe to the to the previous slide. Which one now? Um. um go to slide nineteen. Now the next one. This one. Yes. Okay. That one, yes. Yeah. Maybe okay. we, we must give learners okay. a chance first. You know, they say they advise business on the benefits of a good quality mm -hmm. management system. And um, I gave them a little um, um, acronym there, yes. uh, TCC on there. So maybe we must just give them a chance first. To answer. So, to give, give the provide the answers, and then we go back to giving giving them the correct answers. Okay. Okay. Yeah? But Let's I do think that. Yes. We'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think what we can do is just go um, go on from where you were um, on slide twenty two. Okay. And then we can go go ahead with the rest of the slides, and then learners can actually tell us what they were struggling with and what they didn't understand. And then we okay. can go back, back to those slides so that we can show them um, the idea yes. with, with the images as okay. well as yeah. the, um, 
you know how the the image yes, yes. and the and the fact connect. Okay, okay, we'll do. I will do. Okay, okay, right. So um, we were done with quality assurance. So right, distinguish between quality management and quality performance. So we did speak about this um, a few minutes ago. So um, I'm just going to go through this. In the next slide, I'll give an opportunity for you guys to first answer in the comment section, and then I will give you the answers for the, for the slide. So quality management, I said, was the process of managing all the activities. And quality performance is that each department is made measured against their own specified standards. So we're looking at performing, like for example, if we're looking at uh, grade eight learners, there is uh, marks that they need to obtain to be progressed to the next level. That is the quality performance of the specific group, the grade eights. So if you look in a business environment, total performance of each department, then we will look at each of the business functions. Okay, so yeah, suggest quality indicators of the general management function. Um, um, as Gordon said, you guys can use the pictures and I know visualizing something or you remember it better with pictures. Um, the first thing will be these little ticks there on the side. Uh, the second thing, will be about um, allocating things. And then thirdly, is there a face of somebody that is actually saying something? So first of all, suggest quality indicators for general management. The first thing will be planning. It looks like a diary. You see that there's sticks, and then there's writing, and then there's uh, like a watch. The, so you have to do some effective planning, develop effective strategic plans, that is making plans for your business. Secondly, we are handing out uh, things to people, you see there, from, from the source there at the top, we are handing out to three sources at the bottom and you can remember that by saying efficient allocation of resources. And then where the guy is saying something, that means we need to communicate. And we need to communicate the, the shared vision, mission, and our values so that people can know what is expected of them. Um, as Gordon said, we're going to have questions uh, afterwards. So feel free to type your questions in the meantime, and then I will get back to you. So try to do this one on your own. I'll give you a few minutes. Say so, two minutes. Suggest quality indicators of the production function. And there's one step. There is an acronym in the brackets, CRA. And then you see there on the side, there is a picture of something that has been uh, cut or um, yeah, something that has been cut there. And then once again, there is the same picture of the guy saying something. It can be a lady also. And then we have um, a picture of a lady with a microphone and I think earphones type of thing where you maybe a mobile a phone reception type of thing. So try to get that answers quickly for me. For business to be effective, what do we need to cut to make some more money? If you think like that, what do we need to cut on? Um, then for the production function uh, that must be uh, of high standard, what must the people speak about there? And then thirdly, we're producing something. So the lady there on the phone, she has to do with service. 
And then the answers are, when you work in the production function, we need products to be produced at the lowest possible cost. That means we need to cut things out, which is not profitable. We need to maybe see where we can cut our expenses to allow to make the maximum profit. To keep our cost price as low as possible, uh, we need to cut our production expenses. The guy that says something there, that's speaking at the moment, he needs to communicate the roles and responsibilities to the workers. So he needs to tell them what they must do and what their responsibilities are and who is maybe in charge of what line of production so that everybody can know what to do and work efficiently. And then after the product has now uh, been produced and it has been sold, there needs to be good after sales service. That is when somebody phones customer service and say, listen, um, I bought this phone now the other day and they gave me seven days to return it but I see um, there's something wrong with the with the system or with the um, with the hardware or something can I return it and that is the person that will attend to the school that you will give good after sales service so the C will be the cost in your uh, acronym CRA the R will be the roles and responsibilities, but how will people know? We need to tell them their roles and responsibilities, so we need to communicate. And then the A will be for after-sales services, and that needs to be good. We need to, get, we need to render good after-sales services. Okay. Following question, advise businesses on how TQM, which is total quality management, could impact on the reduction of cost of quality. So, once again, there's an acronym between brackets, QES. So, advise businesses on how TQM could impact the reduction of cost of quality so remember when we implement quality um, procedures in our business it can be uh, costly but how can we uh, um, how can the total quality management reduce the cost of quality three things you see there's a picture of people sitting around the table um, and then there's different colors, which means it can be people from different departments also. Um, and the second thing, there is four things that almost look exactly the same. So what is the impact if we have good quality or um, how can we reduce the cost of quality? And then thirdly, there is a guy, I think it's with a uh, little that uh, forklift type of things, but he's pushing the one that carrying a package. So that is also a clue of what the third one will be. So the first one is people sitting around the table from different departments. The second thing has to do with something that looks the same that has been produced. Um, and then the third thing has to do with somebody delivering something to either your business or your office. Yes, and I'm sure we did um, the first one already. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we already spoke about the that first one. So that one is very easy. Um, any takers there? Let's see who we have in the session. Um, Fuabrug, Craven B, any takers there? I think next time we must make it a competition. The school that 
on the first starting. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Definitely. Um, St. Andrews? Anybody? Okay. No, ma'am, I think you must just go eat. Okay. So the first one you can see, there's people sitting in a circle, and people in a circle is your quality circles. Um, so we need to introduce a quality circle to maybe have five or 10 employees who meet on maybe a weekly basis to discuss and also it is good to have them from different departments so we introduce quality circles of maybe five to ten employees and we'll meet weekly i think will be the most regular meeting um, or the most efficient uh, time to meet then secondly a duplication of tasks so we schedule activities to eliminate duplication of tasks. So we tell people who's in charge of this and by when must it done. Otherwise, there will be five people doing the same task and that is not cost efficient. And then thirdly, somebody delivering something, you have to work closely with your suppliers because suppliers are the people that deliver raw materials to your business. So work closely with your suppliers to improve the quality of raw materials. So if you have a good relationship with your supplier, they will give you a good price also when you uh, buy from them uh, or use their services regularly. So any questions, guys? I know it has it went quick, but um, yeah, any questions? Anybody unsure about something? Nobody? Anybody wants to know something about HR, maybe? Okay, so I'm quickly going to go through to the HR slides again. Just want to show you. Now, um, if you study, and like I said, some of us remember pictures more clearly than we remember um, words, or we, we will remember uh, somebody saying something to us or showing us a picture, then we will visualize it while we're writing. So the first picture there is like a guy that's speaking, there's like the, what do you guys call it, the bubbles with the words in, that is, then you remember it, okay, somebody is saying something, so recruitment will be with telling people so that, that we call word of mouth like we showed there in the acronym internal emails it's not mailing somebody it's an envelope but it's not actually we're not using envelopes within the office by mailing but it is now we're using it electronically so it will be internal emails and the next picture you guys see there is like a ball type thing so you can remember that by putting the vacancy on a notice board and then the last picture internal bulletins you can remember that by saying okay there is somebody written maybe a, a memo or something and they advertise the vacancy on that so use this booklet it's very very nice use the booklet um, use the pictures to your advantage and use the acronyms um, to make it easy for you to remember all the answers to these questions. Is there any questions yet, Ms. Gordon? Yes. Um, there's one child who said, I don't know who it was. I wanted to know, um, as the elements of PDCA, by C, can we say check instead of control? That is correct. You can do that. Yes, yes, that's correct. Yeah. Um, and then somebody said here, yeah. oh, I think you did that already. Uh, when done, can you please go back to the four sources of internal recruit recruitment and reality? <laughs> yes. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Linus, I want to I want you to see that all over. I, I actually gave you some some um, acronyms. OK, so W for word of mouth. I for internal emails in for notice boards. I for internal bulletins. OK, so when you. When you go. Um, when you go to to all of these slides, you'll see I actually gave you some um, acronyms that you can use maybe to to try to re to remember the facts here. Um, so Andrews asked that you go back to slide 28. OK. Twenty eight. So, yeah, slide twenty eight. Okay. Okay, so we spoke about the quality indicators, what make the production function a quality business function. Firstly, the C is for the costing, so we need to cut the cost. So product products and services could be produced at the lowest possible cost to allow for profit maximization. Um, cutting our expenses means we will have a higher profit at the end. Number two, the guy that is making a sound with his mouth, we need to communicate what? The roles and responsibilities to the workers. That's the R. And then number three, the customer service lady, the A is for after sales service. We need to render a good after sales service. Any other questions? Um, uh, somebody said they missed slides two to six due to technical difficulties. Okay. If you can just go um, revise that again, please. Okay. Uh, are the other school done with, with slide 28? Or they're still copying the answers? Okay. Let me go to slide two. Okay, we spoke about the human resources function earlier, and we had to name four sources of internal recruitment. That means it's recruitment within your business, and our acronym is WINI, W-I-N-I. -I. The W will be for, there's a picture with the guys with some word bubbles, so it's a word of mouth. The second one, will be I for internal emails. The N will be for notice boards. And the last I will be for internal bulletin. Um, ma'am? Yes? We, yeah. Internal on that, there's a learner who asks, ma'am, what are internal bulletins? OK. Internal bulletins is when there is uh, like a mem most around with the vacancy, the outline of the vacancy. Um, it's like it can also be like a newspaper or a internal news letter type of thing, and it's advertised in there. So uh, the notice board might just have the vacancy like posted on there, it's just like a A4 piece of paper with the vacancy in the details, the job description, and so on, job specification. And then the internal bulletin might be a weekly newsletter uh, that is uh, sent around or printed out or with this job that is actually vacant that is 
advertised in the that is an internal bulletin. Yeah, thank you. OK, the next one. That you guys missed. Um, we had to differentiate between a job description and a job specification. So job description, just as it says, it describes the job, the specific duties and responsibilities of this job. And it also gives you the key performance areas that means what is important of this job. The job title of this job, that is job description. Everything that has to do with the job itself, its duties, its responsibilities, where and how much you perform, and the name of the specific job. A job specification has to do with you as a person that, that it describes the minimum skills, experience needed for the job. The key requirements. You see, there's a key. The job description has key performance areas, and the job specification have key requirements. Both have a key picture there. Requirements will be things like your um, qualifications. That means your degree or your diploma that is needed for this job. And key performance areas will mean the job's title is accountant or um, cash book clerk or something like that. Okay. Any questions on this? Okay. Outline the purpose of induction as a human resource activity. Once again, we give you the TSC acronym. So why is induction important? The purpose, purpose mean, why is it there? Why do we need to do induction? So firstly, the T is for tour. It gives the new employees a tour of the business. Secondly, the S, we're meeting people. You see the greeting hands there. We introduce new employees to their supervisors and their colleagues. So introducing, we're shaking hands with our people, our supervisors and colleagues. And then there is like a face speaking to an ear there. We communicate information about the products and services offered by the business. So T S C. The purpose of induction, T is for tour. We're looking around, seeing where everything is. They're giving you a tour of the building. The S is for supervisors and colleagues. That means we need to meet them, uh, shake hands with them. So we will be introduced to the supervisors and colleagues. And then the C is for communicate. So we communicate information about the product or the service offered by the business. T is C. Yes. yes. Yeah. I just wanted to, to um, also tell learners that they must, when they, when they look at or when they see a question, they need to look at the cognitive verb. Now, in this case, the cognitive verb is outlined. OK, the cognitive verb is outlined. So um in this case learners can just give us a short sentence that's mm -hmm. why we're giving short sentences so a short sentence okay. for two marks but you cannot just give me one word even though mm -hmm. i give you um communicate the last one day communicate you can't you cannot give only one word you are not going to get a um, any marks for one word. It must be a short sentence. Okay. Yes, Ms. Gordon is right because if we just use the acronym just as is and we just say tour and supervisors and communicate, what does that mean? 
a tour of what we're touring the country what are we touring so you have to just shortly explain what the tea is for what the way how the touring is in the business environment for the purpose of induction so give the new employees a tour of the building or the place of work or the business anything that you can remember for supervisors what about the supervisors we introduce the new employee to the supervisor or the new employee meets the supervisors and colleagues things like that and then communicate what do we communicate we need to communicate what is important the things about the business what do the business offer or what do they produce that is what we need to communicate this is just the acronym is just to guide you towards a small little sentence right and then the next one the aspects that must be included in an induction program that means the process of induction what needs to be included once again we have an acronym which will give you the keywords but you need to make a short sentence so the i once again will be for introduce or introduction to key people and immediate colleagues the key people in this case will be your supervisors or your managers then there is a picture of a building once again t is for a tour but a tour of the premises or a tour of the business building or the place of work and then you see there is a picture of safety clothing a hard head and a mask and uh, safety boots so that has to do with safety regulations and rules needs to also be included in an induction program so um, when the hr manager sits in here has to write up induction program he has to indicate that the new people have to be introduced they need to be taken on a tour of the building and they also need to know and understand the safety regulations and all the rules of the business any questions ms gordon let me just see um Proteus, would you please go back to the question suggesting quality indicators of the general management um, function? And then they're also asking at the end about the teams, are there advantages or disadvantages of TQM? So um, maybe you can go to, to quality, to the quality slides. Okay, we'll do so. Yeah. Remember, this is what they are. The learners are struggling with quality. Yes, yes, yes. They are struggling with that. Um, let me just see. The impact of poorly implemented, or they want to know. Okay. The benefits of a good quality management, yeah. management system yeah. that is advantages and, of and, good and all. then all yeah. the elements of of, of all the the functions okay you can maybe yes. just revise show them yes. the elements yes yes okay so the benefits or the advantages of having a good quality management system there is a, like a watch clock there and then there is a smiley face and then also there is people that are on top and there's other people still climbing so what is the benefits what is the advantages of a good quality management system um the previous slide which says poorly implemented um total quality management that can be seen as the advantages of not having uh, total quality management but in this case we are having we actually doing our uh, processes and we have a quality product so what is the benefits what is the advantages number one we will save time and resources that means if our systems are in place if our workers are 
educated and trained. We will use time efficiently and we will not waste resources. So time and resources are used efficiently. That's number one. The other advantage is, should our time be used efficiently and all our products and resources are used efficiently, we will have effective customer services because our workers will be trained and they will know everything about the product and they will be able to give the customer the advice or the information needed. So having a good quality management system, we will have effective customer services, which will then result in increased customer satisfaction. And if a customer is satisfied, that means you will come back. You will come back to the store and buy from the store again. And that will result in you coming first, you winning, you planting the flag, you having the competitive advantage over your competitors. So the benefits or the advantages of a good quality management system is we will use our time and resources efficiently, number one. Number two, we will have effective, good customers services that will result in customer satisfaction and when our customers are satisfied our store and our closer store which is maybe closer to their house we will have a competitive advantage over our competitors people may be selling the same product as us we will be on top we will be the ones getting all the profits that is the benefits of a good quality management system. We spoke about uh, quality assurance and quality control is the other one. I said quality assurance is we making sure that we are giving a product of quality. So we need to do checks during the production process and after the production process. That is making sure. So quality assurance we need to do quality processes checking during and after the production why so that we can make sure that the product that we produce is of the required standard that is quality assurance quality control has to do with checking the final product if that product meets the required standards. We check the final product, that's quality control. Okay. Quality management and quality performance. Quality management, you see there's one guy sitting there and overseeing the other department, so that means all the activities all of the activities that has to do with producing this service or this product has to be of a consistently high standard. And the next one, quality performance, is that which we meet or we have to check that each department, each business function is actually living up to their different department standards. So the answer, quality management, is the process of managing all the activities needed to ensure the business produces goods and services of consistently high standards. And then quality performance has to do with each department are measured against specified outcomes. So that is why we have to look at each department's quality indicators. What indicates, what shows that that department is doing a good job. That is a quality indicator of your business functions. That is very important. We only touch on the general management here and the production function um, in this session, but you guys can go check the other uh, functions, the quality indicators of, I know they always like to ask HR's quality indicators also. Um, so, the question, Question is suggest quality indicators of the general management function. So, what will we look at in the function of general management? 
to see if it is a function of quality. They show you their picture of a diary and that we're ticking off some things in this uh, little clock. And the second thing is um, there is a resource and we are giving it out to three different uh, places. And then the th third one, we have a face of somebody saying something and then a uh, right mark for saying we're sharing some values or information. So how do we check if general management, the function general management is a function of good quality? Your answer will be like this. First of all, developing effective strategic plans. If there is an effective plan in place, management will be doing their job. If there is allocation of resources, efficient allocation of resources, management will be doing their job good. And if, if there is effective communication with the shared vision, mission and values, the management will be doing their job. So what is this actually? Quality indicators are things that show us if the business function are doing what they're supposed to do and doing it effectively and efficiently. Management, they are the people that make plans, they are the people that divide resources, and they are the people that have the vision of the business, the mission, and they indicate all the values. So how will we know that they're doing their job right? They develop good plans, effective strategic plans. Secondly, efficient allocation of resources. They're not messing with the resources or wasting the resources. They are allocating it effectively. And then thirdly, they effectively communicate shared vision, mission, and values. Okay. And the other one we looked at in this session was the production function, the quality indicators for the production function. So what does the production function do? The production function makes the product. They are that has to do with uh, resources and uh, working with the resources, making sure that everybody knows what they're supposed to do. And then after the product has been done, they have to check that the customer are satisfied. So the answer on this will be as follows. Sorry, wrong slide. The answer will be, we're cutting cost. Products and services could be produced at the lowest possible cost to allow for what? Maximum profit. That is what business is about. We want to make some profit. So production must make sure that they making the product at the lowest possible cost by cutting expenses. Secondly, they need to communicate roles and responsibilities to their workers. That means all the people working in the production function must know exactly what they're supposed to do and what their responsibilities are for. And then thirdly, after the product has been sold, what does the production function do? They must be able to give advice if something is wrong, maybe. They need to render good after sales services. Okay, any questions? Yes. Uh, Ronaldo Fasaki from John Ramsey High School asked, how does this section of the work fit into an essay? Um, Ronaldo, there I can actually answer you. Whatever we have done here, can be asked as part of an essay. For instance, um, I looked at a, a, a previous a question in a previous question paper. Um, you did outline you did the benefits of a total of a, of a good quality management system. So one of the questions there is outline the benefits of a good quality management system. Then you, um, Mrs. Kimpis did the 
difference or uh, the distinction between quality control and quality assurance. So the question here in this essay is distinguish between quality control and quality assurance. And then she also did some of the um, element of what was it now? The quality indicators. The quality indicators. And it says here discuss the quality indicators of the following uh, business functions. And it said the uh, general management, production, and um, yeah, and then the other one, the last one is suggest ways in which TQM can reduce the cost of quality. And that is also um, one of the um, the slides, the last the, one. The slides mm -hmm. um, that that uh, Ma'am did with you. So you can see, even though we 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 did this not as a question but as little chunks, it all when we do it all to or, or, um, uh, do it all together, uh, it can actually form a um, an essay question. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there any other question? I don't think I saw anything else. Okay. Um, there's just this one question from Proteus at the end about the teams. Are they advantages or disadvantages? I don't know. We... Um, for quality, total quality management, advantages, disadvantages, or what is the question, ma'am? They say yeah, at the end about the teams, are there advantages or disadvantages of TQM? Yes, as far as about uh, earlier, we said it's total quality, the benefits of total quality management, the management. advantages, and the poorly so implemented will be, yeah, disadvantages, yeah. yeah. Poorly implemented yes. will be your disadvantages, yeah. Um, Proteus, are you are you clear on that? When it is poorly the, implemented, then that speaks to disadvantages. Disadvantages, yes. And I put and up the slide now about the benefits, so that the, will speak to you. Yeah. The benefits of a uh, good quality management system. Yeah. Um, yes. Any other questions? I still see last question for the essays. Must we study them all? <laughs> all the essays we did in. Other terms, no, <laughs> not. <laughs> no. In studies, we no, it's not easy. <laughs> we do not have essays, okay, and that is why I didn't want to do essays specifically mm. with you, but rather little bits that can all combine into an essay question. Mm. Um, and Fergus said that was the last question. Um, okay. But yeah. Okay. Right, guys. Then I think I am done. Thank you for participating. And good luck with the preparation for the exam. You all do extremely well.